Welcome to June's Leak Code Challenge. Today's problem is coin change two. You're given an array of coins with different denominations and a total amount of money. Write a function to compute the number of combinations that make up that amount. Say we're given the amount five and the list coins of one, two, five. We're going to return four because there's four different combinations. It's going to be five, two, two, one, two, one, 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 and all ones. So my first thought here was, this is pretty simple. I thought this would be a recursive backtracking problem, similar to any other combinations problem that I've seen. So what I did was write a DFS function and it's gonna first sort coins and try each combination with one in a for loop and keep passing in the um, amount so far that we calculated and if that amount that we've keep a pen like um, adding on to this recursion equals the amount then we uh, add one to our output which is a outside self variable and uh, we just continue through this whole recursion until we find every combination since it's sorted though it's never gonna uh, it's gonna break before we have to add like the uh, amounts that are larger that's going to always exceed the total amount. Anyway, this doesn't work. <laughs> Long story short, this I thought would work. It does solve the test case, but answers four, but it times out. And that frustrated me because I thought this should work. But eventually, I looked at the solution and it's a dynamic programming solution. Here is the basic idea. Um, so it's not too far off, but say that we had, for example, two coins, just one and two, and we want to find out how many combinations of four there are. Well, as you know, in DP, like we could create a 2D matrix with the amounts inc incrementing by one all the way to four, which is going to be the one that we want to return, as well as the different number of coins that we'll be adding. And here I've shown it like this, but really it can be shown as like zero or empty one and just two there. Uh, so if we calculate this at our base case, how many ways can we generate zero with no coins? And that actually, actually answer for that actually is gonna be one because there's only one way, which is nothing. Like we don't give anything and that's gonna be zero. Same with here, it's gonna be one because the only way to make zero is to put nothing. And same with here, the only way to put create a zero amount with these two coins is, is going to be nothing, which is one. And that was tricky to me because I would have thought that's zero, but whatever, uh, it's going to be one. And as for how many ways we can make these different amounts, we first increment down this, it's all going to be zero, right? Because uh, if we have no change, no coins, like we can't create these amounts ever. So fine, easy enough. Now, what about one? Well, with one coin, how many ways can we make one? And this is the tricky part. You could either use the coin one or you could not use it. And if you do use it, what you'd have to do is actually subtract that one coin and see how many ways that you were able to generate the previous amount as well. Because with this one coin, um, like you, you have to, um, it's like the sub problem, right? The previous problem, when you subtract one, as long as we know how many ways could we have made the total amount up here, subtracted by the one coin, and we just need to add it to here, um, which is simply going to be the number previous here, which is going to be one, as well as the amount on top of us where we say we don't use any of the coins. So that's going to be zero. So all this is here is going to be zero plus one, which is one and that's gonna continue on all the way down here. Um, now, this might make a little more sense. What about two? So if we have to use an two coin and we wanna make the amount one, there's no way to do that, right? So that's gonna be zero, except we also wanna, considering that we have to count everything above that with the ones up here, we'll have to take this one because we know that there's actually one way uh, to make one with our one coin, right? So that's one. Uh, what I hear though, here we can, we can make that amount. So we had to, to first take the one, how many ways can we make um, two with using just ones? 
and how many ways can we make two using two? And to count that, we just check, okay, how many ways could we make zero using two? And that would have been one. So that's going to be one plus one, and that's two. Here, it's going to be also the same thing, one plus one, that's two. And here, though, it'll say uh, one plus two, so that's actually three. And if you think about that, that does make sense because you can either have four pennies, you could have two pennies and a two coin, or you could have two two coins. Right, um, and one more thing, you could actually just do this on a single array if you look carefully, just build upon each one at a time. Uh, you don't actually need the 2D matrix. So why does this work? And that's the part that I I have to admit that I don't understand precisely why this works. I've, I've, I get the explanation and I understand that this is a dynamic programming solution, but I can't imagine me coming up with the solution like on the spot. So sometimes I just kind of have to admit, okay, I, I don't totally get it. Um, I can kind of see why this works, but ultimately you're going to have to just practice. Uh, I think we're just going to have to practice and, and keep seeing these problems. And hopefully slowly this, like, the, I don't know, the mathematical reasons and the patterns will start to tr trickle in. Because um, I'll be honest, I don't totally understand, like, what is the intuition behind this exactly? So whatever. Um, I'll just let's go ahead and solve it with the amount, um, the accepted solution. It's something like this, right? We first create a DP array. We can make this um, uh, just, let's see here, we get zero, and we're going to multiply it by the length of coins uh, plus one, right? And first thing we want to do is make zero equal to one. Now, four. Um, all the C in coins, we're going to, uh, right, the outer loop is going to be the coins, and this is going to be the amounts for the I in range of one, amount plus one. Because I just showed you that matrix, right? The rows are the coins, and, and the columns are going to be the amounts. So if I is greater or equal to C, we want to update our DP array with DPI equals DP. Um, we, want, we want to add whatever this in, um, current column is with DPI minus C. All right, with that, yeah, so C. And finally, well, we just go through that whole thing and we're just going to return DP. Uh, the last one, so that's just negative one, I guess. So wait, let me make, su make sure this is a good. Oh, okay. Mm. So I think it's just uh, order of operations problem. Okay. Pi minus c. If i is greater or equal to Right, right. Hmm. Coins. I know I did. It's, it's not the length of the coins, it's the amount. Yeah. Okay, so this is definitely should work. Yep, okay, so you submit that. And accepted. So I'm going to give put in a couple links uh, that help me kind of get the solution. I think the explanations are a lot better. But yeah, I, I think uh, sometimes you just kind of have to wave the white flag and say, okay, this problem kicked my ass. But ah, what are you going to do? Just got to keep practicing and get better. All right, thank you.